Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Stiff Joints. Today we're going to be taking a look at the NECA Ultimate Leather Face from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, to start us off we're going to look at the box. Um, it's got the, the original movie poster, which, uh, you know, it's become a sort of pattern with the Ultimate figures recently. Um, they don't do it quite as... well, they, did, they still do it, but... Not all the time. Uh, there are a few figures that don't use the poster from the movie, but the, there are more that use it. So yeah, uh, round the box you've got this sort of um, sort of flesh, stitched flesh. You know, obviously he takes people's faces off and wears them. And then we've got uh, on the back of the box we've got figures, uh, pictures of the figure um, and its um, accessories, uh, and the alternate head sculpt. Um, and you also get a bit of detail about them. The box uses a um, velcro to join the sort of um, cover under the rest of the box and if you open that up you get a really nice picture of the figure and then inside you get the sort of backdrop which is obviously the bit from the movie uh, and obviously in there you get the figure and the accessories. So to start us off we're going to look at the accessories. So the first one we've got is some kind of um, I don't know some, a dagger. I th well it is, but I don't remember seeing this one in the movie. It's 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 reasonably well detailed actually. Uh, let me try to get it to focus on it, but it's not really working. So it's it's sort of you know it's all right. It's a sort of flat kind of brown with a bit of sort of grey or something. Uh, and then you get two sort of, uh, I want to say screws, and then you get the, the blade. It's, it's simple, it's a simple little thing, and you can't actually hold it. So I don't really understand the, the sort of point, because I, I can't remember this in the film. Uh, next up, um, you get a sledgehammer, which is, a, you know, it's reasonably well detailed. Well, it's shape anyway, it's just sort of flat brown, and then, you know, silver. Um, we then have the sort of uh, cleaver, meat cleaver. Uh, I, I don't remember this in the film either. Obviously, it, it, it makes sense. It's probably in the background, and it's just a really small detail they've decided to put in. It's not a flat brown. This one, there's a bit, bit more to it this time actually. Um, try to say that. Oh, maybe that's better. Um, still trying to figure out the lighting. So, as you can kind of tell, it's not uh, sort of one colour, but the blade, yeah again, it is, you know, I'm surprised they didn't put uh, any blood on the those bl uh, things. And then we get the meat hook, which does have um, some blood on it. It's kind of weird though, because it just kind of cuts off uh, there, and I don't really understand why it's like that. Uh, it's kind of strange uh, to actually do that, because it's kind of sudden, and it looks kind of odd. Uh, you know, I'd imagine it would go up the back there a little more, but well, it doesn't. And the star of the show, the chainsaw. Now, this one, you know, it, it, I think figures, uh, leather face figures, have struggled with the chainsaw as an um, accessory. Because either it doesn't look like this, or the blade's like way off. I think the Mezco one was like overly large and wide. Uh, and then. You know, the paint on this one is uh, surprisingly good. Uh, it's it's most detailed. Yeah, again, um, it, this one does have blood on it. Um, uh, but the worst thing is, this this came off like just before I started filming. And, you know, he's meant to hold on to it. But it's so hard to get his hands to hold on because you have to shove it in. So, that's an really really annoying I think uh, that's obviously it can be, be glued but this shouldn't really happen it's really delicate and it's it's annoying I'd rather you know I'd want to have him with this but he does use other weapons in the film so it's a shame but it does look very nice when he does hold it uh, and now we have the alternate head which um you know, it, it is in the movie. It's not in it for very long, though. But, it you know, it doesn't really scream Leatherface. And it's not that threatening, really. 
and it's a hole and you can see it's uh, here in there and, uh, yeah, yeah, like that but it's um it, it's well sculpted it's just a uh, you know it's not really my favorite um accessory with the actual figure now for the the main figure leather face uh, you, this is like by far the best leather face figure we have like ever had we uh, i i have the McFarlane one it's not not with me right now but uh you know it's uh, this is so much i want to say the, the McFarlane one isn't bad it's just not movie accurate it's, it really freaks me out uh maybe more than this one but for a movie accurate figure this is the, like the best one ever cuz Mezco too stylistic and it's not movie accurate. It's still a good figure yet again. Um, and NECA did one in the cult classics, uh, and it's well, I, I'll be honest, I'm not keen on that one. Uh, but this one, this is great. Like, it's it's just you know, it, it looks like Leatherface from the film more than any of the other figures, so it's obviously got that going for it. Uh, the, the sort of paint on this is much better uh, than any of the other ones I think you know it's textured very well you know as it got his dirty shirt I think the arms are a bit too sort of dirty because uh, in the film you know he's not really that dirty I don't think and he's, he's got this bone uh, sort of bracelet which I, I don't remember it's probably there I just didn't notice it uh, and then we got the the apron. Now this is really really cool because it's like a I don't know what kind of thing. It's like leather, but <laughs> uh, it's obviously it isn't. But uh, you know, it's it's some fabric anyway, and it's tied around there. And I, I dread the day that it comes undone, so I'm not going to fiddle around with that. Art as for articulation, you know, it kind of swivels um, at the sort of oh God, what's that bit called? crotch, I uh, uh, you know, and that moves, his arms can do a full 360, they go out, um, his arms, uh, his f the lower bit, I need to work on my anatomy, I am not good at biology, uh, his hands uh, can, yeah, again, his kind of ball joint, that's it, the head is also on a ball joint, uh, and the head can come off, so you can swap it round with uh, the other head, but this will give us a better look at this one. Uh, it's actually quite good. Um, I'm not sure. I I, I kind of think I would think the figure would be much scarier if the eyes were a bit more blacked out and you couldn't see them. I suppose in the film you could see them, but not as much as you can see them in this. And I, I think that's the, the, the most disappointing uh, aspect of the figure is how easy you can see the eyes. Um, obviously it looks like they sculpted a lot behind the mask, but I don't think it's, you know, like a, I don't think it's quite as, I don't think there's anything underneath it is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I don't think they do that, that's a very sort of McFarlane thing to do with a face sculpt behind the mask. But you can dream, you can dream about what's behind the face. It's also got his uh, little tie <laughs> there. Uh, I don't know. I've never seen a tie like that in real life. You know, uh, he can hold most um, accessories fairly well, but some, you know, like the stupid, stupid little knife. Uh, I don't like that one. He can't hold this in his right hand because it just totally slips through, like, like that. And I, I think it's meant to go in a, this one here. Because, uh, you know, it kind of stops there and you can push it in further. But, you know, it kind of... It just works much better. Like the... Uh, and, uh, it, you know, the, you can display this figure quite well, you know. He, he holds the um, accessories uh, very well. Uh, so, obviously, that's uh, good. You, you know, you can't have a leather face without say the chainsaw um, which is very difficult to get in his hands they go in his hands are kind of kind of rubbery kind of you can sort of move them around a little bit uh, you know like, 
I don't know if you can tell, but you, know, you can push fists in and stuff. But yeah, that, that's quite good. So, this is by far the best leather face figure you can get. They have done a retro cloth one, but I feel like the face on that one isn't as good as this one. So, if you are after a leather face, this is the one to get. It's got the best articulation and the best sculpt. So, thanks for watching the first ever episode. I hope to see you again. Thanks.